In this essay, we will be examining the time period from the 1300s to the 1600s AD, immediately leading up to and following the events described in, concluding with the ultimate publication dates of, the R.C. Manifestos. Thorough investigation of the concurrent geopolitical events of this era, as well as specifications on certain key historical figures from the time period, comprise the primary data set. The primary focus of the data set is to examine possible origins for the R.C. order. Implications of the data set include raising the question of if the R.C. manifestos were authored by John D., as well as exploring the idea that the R.C. order was real. Throughout the essay, we will be using the term R.C. to mean Rose Cross, the term C.R.C. to mean Christian Rosencruz, and the term R.C. order to mean Rosicrucianism. The 14th century, Anno Domini, marked the transition from the medieval warm period with the wolf minimum from 1280 to 1350 AD, following the medieval maximum on the sunspot cycle, which had lasted from 1100 to 1250, leading then into the Little Ice Age, corresponding to the sporer minimum from 1450 to 1550, and the Modener Minimum from 1645 to 1715. Sunspots have been being observed in Western cultures since at least 300 BC, when Theophrastus, circa 371 to circa 287 BC, student under Plato and Aristotle, wrote in his treatise on weather signs in his larger work on botany, Inquiry into Plants, quote, If the sun, when it rises, has a black mark, or if it rises out of clouds, it is a sign of rain. End quote. With the resultant gradual decrease of global temperatures commensurate to these minimums, on the sunspot cycle of the era came a decisive ending for many old world paradigms that had persisted even from prior to the era of Greek democracy, throughout the intervening age of Roman rule over Europe, right up to the recent feudal era. Italian poet and author Francesco Petrarca, called Petrarch, 1304-1374 AD, is credited in modernity with coining the term Dark Ages, as early as around 1330, to refer to the preceding around 900 years, beginning with the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD and culminating in the then burgeoning Renaissance. But the world Petrarch then seemed to so optimistically see emerging from its long dark night to quote Spanish mystic St. John of the Cross, 1542 to 1591, was one already torn apart by famine from 1315 to 1317, bringing about millions of deaths across Europe, and ripe to be gangrened by the resultant Black Death epidemic from 1347 to 1351, which claimed the lives of roughly one-third the entire remaining population of the region. In 1320 AD, Dante Alighieri, Italian poetic author, 1265 to 1321, completed his masterpiece, The Divine Comedy. Comedy meaning in the literary vernacular of the times, a low poem with a happy ending written in plain language, as opposed to a tragedy or high poem with a more serious tone and somber ending. And a year later died, possibly of malaria, at age 56. 
This narrative poem of 14,233 lines, divided into 33 cantos per each part, describes the inferno, hell, purgatorio, purgatory, and paradiso, paradise, with an introductory canto, bringing the total cantos to a hundred. The last word in each of the three parts is stelly, stars. In this epic work, Dante describes his own journey through the realms of the afterlife escorted by the Roman poet Virgil, whom had lived around 70 to 19 BC, and much of what he describes seeing has been interpreted as a form of allegory for his own Thomistic beliefs, based on the Summa Theologica of St. Thomas Aquinas, 1225 to 1274, and his political beliefs, which sided with the Florentine papist White Gelfs, for which he would be permanently exiled in 1302, by action of Pope Boniface VIII, whom supported the Florentine Black Gelfs in opposition to Dante's faction of choice. Dante's comedy, written from 1308 to 1320, allegorically encompasses this grim transition in European history as old world ideals and feudal economics began crumbling, inevitably giving way to the Renaissance and Enlightenment. Whether or not Dante knew it, Europe's next great military foe was already, during his own lifetime, growing in power across the Mediterranean from Italy. After fleeing from the Mongolian invasion of Anatolia with his father, Ertegrul, then the bey or chief of the Oghuz Turkic Kayai tribe, young Atman or Othman, ascended as Osman Bey in 1280 AD and would go on to expand his Ottoman Bilek or Emirate from the towns of Bithynia and Sogut, eventually attacking the Byzantine Eastern Roman Empire near Nicaea, Ephesus near the Aegean Sea, and the city of Bursa. Coupled with the Black Death's decimation entering Anatolia and the Balkans in 1347, the Ottomans' continual military advancements eventually wore down the resistance of Constantinople, capital of the Byzantine Empire, and after a 53-day siege in 1453, the city finally fell to Mehmed II, the Conqueror, 1432 to 1481, seventh sultan of the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire would prove a unified front in opposition to a disunited Europe throughout the next few centuries. But the Ottoman Turks were not alone in playing a part in the future of Europe. Nicholas Flamel, 1330-1418 AD, a French manuscripts dealer, posthumously heroized as a leading alchemist of his time, was attributed as having learned the arts of metallurgy on the road to Santiago de Compostela. Works purporting to be attributable to Flamel, including the Philosophical Summary, first published in The Transformation of Metals, Paris, Guillaume Gilliard, 1561, and The Book of Hieroglyphic Figures, first published in The Third Tractate of Natural Philosophy, Paris, Vouvet, Guillemot, 1612, continued to arise for centuries following his death. Around Flamel's own lifetime, according to the Book of Abramelin the Mage, the earliest extant German manuscripts of which now known date to around 1608, Abraham of Worms, Germany, circa 1362 to 1458, studied under Abramelin, an Egyptian scholar, in around 1409, 
and Abramelin imparted to Abraham a system of magic number square laymans. Meanwhile, in the Confessio Fraternitatis, the Confession of the Brotherhood of R.C., first printed in Castle, Germany in 1615, the birth date of Frater C.R.C., the work's protagonist, is explicitly listed as 1378. By the 1453 A.D. fall of Byzantine Constantinople, or rise of Turkish Istanbul, depending on one's personal point of view, there were already empires in the land masses we call now Central and South America as well, although these remained undiscovered by and unknown about to the populations of Europe until around 1492, when the Italian explorer for Spain, Christopher Columbus, began the conquests of these lands for Europe. In 1438, the Inca Empire was established by Pachacuti, and by the 1450s, Machu Picchu, in modern-day Peru, was completed. In 1428, the three Nahau Altepetl city-states, Tenochtitlan, modern Mexico City, Texcaco, and Tlacopan formed a triple alliance and from 1440 to 1469 Moctezuma I led this Aztec empire to become the dominant power in Mesoamerica. By way of comparison, 1441 was the year in which Portuguese navigators re-established the European slave trade by importing a shipment of African slaves into Portugal. It should be obvious that in the first half of the 15th century, civilizations were expanding rapidly in South and Mesoamerica, but were beginning to fall apart in Europe. This culminated in the overthrow of the Byzantine Empire by the Ottoman Empire, and the death of the last Roman Emperor, Constantine XI. Again, for comparison, consider that it wasn't until 1456, 25 years after she'd been burnt alive at the stake for heresy, that Joan of Arc, 1412-1431, who was only... 19 when she was executed, was acquitted of all charges by the Catholic papacy of the time. While England was embroiled in the War of the Roses, a civil war between the houses of York and Lancaster from 1455 to 1485 AD, Spain began to become an empire. Perhaps emboldened by the 1462 victory of Wallachian Prince Vlad the third, Dracula, 1431-1476, to in the night attack against Mehmed II the Conqueror. In 1469, Ferdinand II of Aragon, 1452-1516, to and Isabella I of Castile, 1451-1504, to wedded to unify Spain but quickly enough made apparent their loyalties by introducing the Inquisition. The first Spanish auto de fe was in 1481, launching foreign explorations for more resources, hence Christopher Columbus's discovery of the New World for them in 1492, and in the same year enacting the expulsion of and pogroms against all the Jews of Spain. Around the middle of the 1400s A.D., there was a boom in the birth rate of seemingly innovative geniuses. Following the death of Filippo Brunelleschi, 1377 to 1446, inventor of one-point perspective, and around the time of the first publication of the Gutenberg Bible in Mainz, Germany, in 1455, and Mentel, German language Bible in 1466, came the births of John Cabot, circa 1450 to 1499, Italian-English founder of Newfoundland, 
Hieronymus Bosch, circa 1450 to 1516, early Netherlandish painter. Christopher Columbus, 1451 to 1506, Italian explorer for Spain. Leonardo da Vinci, 1452 to 1519, Florentine Italian polymath. Amerigo Vespucci, 1454 to 1512, Italian explorer for Spain who discovered the east coast of South America in 1499 and landed in 1509. Johann Trithemius, 1462 to 1516, German Benedictine abbot. Niccolo Machiavelli, 1469 to 1527, Italian author. Albrecht Durer, 1471 to 1528, German artist. Nicholas Copernicus, 1473 to 1543, born in Thorn, Royal Prussia, Kingdom of Poland and the father of modern astronomy. Thomas More, 1478 to 1516, author of Utopia. Dr. Johann George Faust, circa 1480 or 1466 to circa 1541, itinerant German Renaissance alchemist and magician. Raphael, 1483 to 1520, Italian painter. Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa von Nettensheim, 1486 to 1535, German polymath. Philippus Aeolus Theophrastus Bombastus von Hohenheim, called Paracelsus, 1493 to 1541, Swiss polymath and alchemist, and finally Suleiman the Magnificent, 1494 to 1566, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. All of these men would go on to shape the geopolitical and philosophical landscapes of the following century. Notable deaths in the 1400s included, of course, Nicholas Flamel, 1330 to 1418, as well as the apocryphal characters of Abraham of Worms, circa 1362 to 1458, from the Book of Abramelin, and Frater CRC, 1378 to 1484 of the R.C. Manifestos. Undoubtedly the dominant figures of the 15th century were Vlad Tepes Dracula, 1431 to 1476, and the Italian Renaissance humanist polymath and cryptographer Leon Battista Alberti, 1404 to 1472. Now, if the protagonist of the R.C. Manifestos, Frater C.R.C., is said in the Confessio, 1615 A.D., to have been born in 1378 and to have lived for 106 years, then it can be reasoned out his founding the R.C. fraternity would have occurred around the year 1407. The book... The Chemical Wedding of Christian Rosenkrantz in the year 1459, first appeared in German, printed in Strasbourg in the year 1616, and although initially published as authored anonymously, ultimately in his autobiography, a Lutheran theologian and author of Description of the Republic of Christianopolis, Johann Valentinius André, 1586 to 1654 claimed authorship of it. In this work, considered the third R.C. Manifesto, it is claimed that Frater C.R.C., called Christian Rosenkrantz therein, was knighted around Easter Sunday, 1459. Notably, it was on exactly that day in 1459 that the Constitutions of the Freemasons of Strasbourg was first signed in Regensburg, with a second signed shortly afterward in Strasbourg.
At the opening of the 16th century AD, Abbot Trithemius, 1462-1516, was instructing Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, 1486-1535, and Paracelsus, 1493-1541, on his Steganographia in Germany, where Dr. Faust 1480 to 1541, yet wandered. The first African slaves were shipped to the New World in around 1502. Michel de Nostradam, 1503 to 1566, was born in France. From 1508 to 1512, Michelangelo painted the fresco ceilings of the Sistine Chapel in Rome, Italy, expressing with slightly exaggerated mannerism the peak of the Italian Renaissance. From 1509 to 1510, the Great Plague swept across various parts of Tudor England, and for decades following this event, symptoms of a so-called sweating sickness continued to be reported to doctors. By 1551, when John Caius of Shosbury finally wrote down notes on this seemingly long-term epidemic, there had been five different outbreaks of it across England. Then, as the first decade of the 16th century AD came to a close, there were three works that were released as publicly printed, widely distributed works of literature that have since then permanently changed the face of Western philosophical thinking. The first of these was the 1512 Commentaries by Copernicus, 1473-1543, proposing the heliocentric model of the solar system, with the sun at the center and the planets, including Earth, all orbiting around it. The second published work that altered people's ways of thinking forever afterward was the 1513 work by Niccolo Machiavelli, 1469-1527, The Prince, a geopolitical satire. The third work was equally impactful, but its effect was overshadowed by the geopolitical events that quickly followed it. This was the publication in Latin, around 1516, of the St. Thomas More, 1478-1535, work Utopia, printed in Louvain, edited by Desiratus Erasmus Rotterdamerus, 1466-1536, a Dutch Renaissance humanist, and ultimately printed in Basel in 1515. The book was not translated into Moore's native tongue of English until the 1551 Ralph Robinson edition, some 16 years following Moore's execution for treason for refusing to swear the oath of supremacy to Henry VIII after he'd split the Anglican Church away from Catholicism. St. Moore opposed both Anglicanism and the Lutheran Protestant Reformation and was a staunch proponent of Catholicism, despite expressing different ideas in his utopia. The geopolitical events that overshadowed the first publication in Latin of Utopia were, namely, the very Lutheran Protestant Reformation and split of Anglicanism away from Catholicism that St. Moore opposed. In 1517, the year after Moore's Latin Utopia was published in the Netherlands, Martin Luther posted his 95 theses in Saxony. Two years later, Leonardo da Vinci, 1452-1519, passed on of natural causes at the age of 67. In the same year as Leonardo's death, Charles I of Spain, 1500-1559 AD, ascended the throne of the Holy Roman Emperor as Charles V and ruled until 1556. Under his edicts, Spain was positioning itself to expand into the first truly global empire, in the same year as his ascension, a Spanish expedition commanded by Ferdinand Magellan, 1480 to 1521, and Juan Sebastian Elcano, 
1476 to 1526, set out to circle the entire planet and returned successful in 1522. In the same year as Charles V's coronation as HRE, also, Hernan Cortes led the Spanish conquest of Mexico, which lasted from 1519 to 1521. In Spain proper, the Inquisition and Jewish purges continued, and the result of all this imperial posturing was ultimately that, in 1557, Habsburg Spain was forced to declare financial bankruptcy, the first of four times, 1557, 1560, 1575, and 1596, that Philip II, Charles V's successor, would have to do so. Not only the imperial posturing of European continental Spain's rulers posed problems for the European nation-states of the era, but also the continuing unified front of opposition to the south and southeast of Europe, the Ottoman Empire, that was by that time directly administering a larger land mass than all continental Europe combined. Under Suleiman the Magnificent, 1494 to 1566, stretching from Basra and Baghdad in the Far East to Algiers on the North African coast in the Far West and as far north into Eastern Europe as Buda near Vienna, Austria. In 1527 AD, the unthinkable occurred and Rome was sacked and burned. Pope Clement VII and his loyal 42 Swiss Guards escort narrowly escaping down the Peseto de Borgo, a secret corridor between Vatican City and Castel de San Angelo, while behind them the imperial troops of Charles V, HRE, slaughtered the remaining 147 Swiss Guard troops on the steps of St. Peter's Basilica. More than merely bringing a sour end to the Italian Renaissance, this event demonstrated the vulnerability of the papacy to the whole world at a critical moment in history. Begun in 1517, within a decade the Protestant Reformation movement was growing strong, and this plus the sack of Rome emboldened Henry VIII of England to annul his own marriage, breaking from Catholic tradition, and to, from 1531 to 1532, established the Anglican Church as autonomous from Catholicism. It was into this world that John D. 1527 to 1609 was born, in the same year as the sack of Rome. Other news stories from the 1530s would have involved the 1531 Inca civil war between the brothers Atahualpa and Huasgar, the 1536 establishment of the Inquisition in Portugal, and the 1537 partial translation into English of the Bible in the William Tyndale 1494-1536 edition. In 1559 AD, Elizabeth I, 1533-1603, was coronated Queen of England, and her reign is generally considered the height of the English Renaissance. Nevertheless, in the midst of her reign, in 1563, a plague outbreak killed 80,000 people in England, 20,000 in London alone. In 1565, the Hospitallers, a crusading order of chivalric knights, defeated the Ottoman Empire's troops at the Siege of Malta. This battle, in some sense, may have turned back the tide of the encroaching Ottoman menace, because the following year, Suleiman the Magnificent, 1494 to 1566, died. In the same year, Michel Nostradamus, 1503 to 1566, died. In the 1570s, the news was much ado over international affairs with the final Spanish conquest of the last remaining Inca leader, Tupac Amaru, at Vilcabamba, Peru and his execution in Cuzco in 1572. 
In 1577, English explorer Francis Drake set out to repeat the Spanish explorer Magellan's feat of circumnavigating the globe, and Drake returned from his voyage in 1580. That same year, Spain, presumably tired of declaring bankruptcy, unified with Portugal under Philip II, securing a partnership that lasted 60 years until 1640. In 1582, Pope Gregory XIII issued the final report on calendar reform to account for the gradual changing in durations of our planetary motions, redacting 11 days from October 4th Julian, skipping to October 15th Gregorian. It was into this world that were born Tycho Brahe, 1546-1601, Danish astronomer, Giordano Bruno, 1548-1600, Italian astronomer, William Shakespeare, 1564-1616, English playwright, Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, a Tuscan Italian physicist and astronomer, Michelangelo Marisi de Caravaggio, 1571 to 1610, Italian painter, Johannes Kepler, 1571 to 1630, German astronomer, Thomas Hobbes, 1588 to 1679, English philosopher and author of the Leviathan. And finally, René Descartes, 1596 to 1650, French philosopher. By the turn of the 17th century A.D., John D., 1527 to 1609, had already returned from his travels abroad on the European continent, entertaining at the court of Rudolf II. Habsburg HRE, 1576-1612, to 1612, in Bohemia, studying Torah with Judah Lo ben Bezalel, Maharal of Prague, 1512-1609, and summoning the Enochian Angels with his scrying partner, Edward Kelly, 1555-1597. His home and libraries having been ransacked and looted while he'd been away, John Dee was likely not more equipped to process the news than would have been René Descartes that year, his fourth birthday. The Giordano Bruno, 1548-1600, was burned at the stake in Rome's Campo de Fiori by the Catholic Papacy for various charges of heresy. Bruno was a professed pantheist and believed in reincarnation but because he also advocated the stars in the night sky are only distant suns alike our own that may possibly host planets of their own that house different forms of life than our own, his ritual cremation was seen as a kind of martyrdom for science. Again, the Catholic papacy of Vatican City in Rome was trying and failing to maintain the same powerful hegemony it had enjoyed throughout the dark ages of feudal Europe, rather than adapting to changing times. Having begun losing the many genius luminaries of the past century to old age and death, there was a definite feeling of empowerment and a tension over how this power would be released that could be palpably felt among the European peoples. The printing press had brought educational opportunities to former serfs and elevated many from the status of pages to trade craft shop masters, while the discovery of the new world in the Americas had literally opened up a world of opportunities for people to explore and travel. The momentum of undertow toward that later notion of manifest destiny was already tugging at the heartstrings of European imperialists in the mid-1550s, John D. had made no mistake when, as a younger man of 28 years of age, he had invested his inherited stocks in the livery company of the City of London, 
called the Worshipful Company of Mercers, into the Muscovy Company, the first major English joint stock trading company, with outlines for foreign trade expansion, including military imperialism, in 1555. 1555 was also the year Nostradamus published Le Prophetes, a collection of his quatrain prophecies. By 1600, the darkness both John Dee and Nostradamus rightly foresaw had fallen across the face of Europe. In 1602, the Dutch East India Company was established by a nationalizing merger of competing trade corporations. The following year, Elizabeth I of England, 1533-1603, died. In 1605, the gunpowder plot against the English Parliament was planned, but foiled before it could be executed. In 1607, Jamestown, Virginia was settled as the first permanent English colony in North America. Clearly, a new age of competitive imperialism was begun. In around 1609 A.D., John D. died as well. But just before this, in 1607 or so, a strange event occurred, the first of what would later prove to be no fewer than two definitive manifestos appeared in Germany, having been published and distributed presumably through the same publishers, again in Louvain, modern Belgium. The distributed the 1609 edition of the Heinrich Kunrath of Hamburg, 1560-1605 work, The Alchemist's Lab. The first two R.C. manifestos are strange enough on their own, but the third manifesto, The Chemical Wedding, complicates matters further. It's having been published anonymously initially, and later claimed as his own Ludibrium, by Johann Valentin André, 1586-1654, a plausible enough claim, though possibly dubious nevertheless. The chemical wedding includes John Dee's unique Monus Hieroglyphica symbol in its invitation opening narrative. In 1611 A.D., the first editions of the King James Bible rolled off of Gutenberg printing presses and were distributed to Anglican churches. The first complete copies of the Bible in English, rather than Church Latin, opened up whole new worlds to the minds of apt pupils, ever eager to digest more. But this new empowering liberation of the working class minds did not arrive without taking a toll in return. In 1618, the Bohemian Protestant Revolt following the defenestration of Prague, led to the Thirty Years' War, lasting from 1618 to 1648, in which the office of the HRE struggled to maintain its relevance in increasingly modernizing times. Emperor Ferdinand II's early defeat of the Bohemian rebels in the 1620 Battle of the White Mountain occurred simultaneously to the Puritan Brownist pilgrims arriving at Plymouth Rock in Cape Cod on the Mayflower. But those seeking to escape oppression from the continental European and mainland Asian empires were to find little opportunity to relax in these new American colonies. In 1622, Algonquin natives killed 347 English settlers outside Jamestown, Virginia, one-third of the colony's population, and burned the Heinrichus settlement. However, instead of withdrawing colonizing troops from America entirely, the apparent and immediate result of the Algonquin raids was that the Dutch West India Company founded New Amsterdam in 1625. In 1626, construction on St. Peter's Basilica in Vatican City, Rome, Italy, was declared officially completed. In 1631, Mount Vesuvius in Campania, Italy, erupted. And in 1633, Galileo Galilei, 1564-1642, Italian astronomer, arrived in Rome for his trial before the Inquisition. 
ultimately by the end of the 17th century AD. A truly new world order had begun to take shape in the philosophies of commoners, as in 1649, King Charles I of England was executed for treason against the public parliament. Were it not for such events as this having happened in prior history, then Denis Diderot, 1713 to 1784, could not have posited that mankind will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails of the last priest. The 17th century ended with the Salem, Massachusetts witch trials, 1692. Beginning at the end of the second decade of the 17th century AD, there were, again, as in the first decade of the preceding century, three major works of literature published that would serve to plot a course for much of popular philosophical thinking over the subsequent century, and possibly even for time immemorial beyond that. By the end of the 17th century, the 1687 publication of the work Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy by Isaac Newton, 1642-1727, had irrevocably altered the history of our species, establishing the stylistic foundation for all subsequent schools of material science that followed. However, again, without the publication of these three works earlier in that century, Newton's own calculations would not have been fathomed then and our present history would look drastically different from how it appears to us now. In 1619 A.D., Johann Kepler, 1571-1630, published Harmonices Mundi, The Harmony of the World, in which he proposed the distance between planetary orbits may be derived using a ratio like that determining musical harmonics, and, in 1621, published a second edition of his older work, originally published at Tübingen in 1596, the year René Descartes was born, entitled Mysterium Cosmographicum, the Cosmic Mystery, in which he proposed the distance relationships between the six planets known at that time could be understood in terms of the five platonic solids enclosed within a sphere that represented the orbit of Saturn. In both these works, Kepler used complex calculus and geometries that have proven to differ from observable conditions in reality, but which nevertheless warrant great scrutiny and study, being that they inspired the shortly subsequent work, the Principia, or Principles, of Isaac Newton, which contained even more mathematically accurate models accounting for real-world observations. It may be overlooked sometimes that without the successful publications and lack of persecution by the Vatican Papacy of Johann Kepler, there would likely not have been able to have been the 1687 work Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy by Sir Isaac Newton. It was almost as though, by attempting to propose a perfect or ideal model for the solar system's orbits, Kepler's work proved a tipping point after which subsequent researchers who wished to adhere more acutely to observational data only could proceed to do so with less fear of reprisal from Rome. In 1627 AD, published posthumously to his passing by one year, the work by Francis Bacon, 1561-1626, appeared as a work of the same genre as Thomas More's Utopia of 1516 and Johann Valentin André's Christianopolis of 1619. Bacon's use of More's Utopian model was so recognizable that almost a century later, English satirist Jonathan Swift, 1667-1745, parodied it in Book 3 of his 1726 work, amended 1735, Gulliver's Travels.
While the deadpan ironic Swiftian writing style in Gulliver's may make the topic more approachable for children, it remains nevertheless an important idea to consider, and an innately Rosicrucian ideal project. If you could design your own model for a perfect society, and build it from the ground up, what would it be like? What values would you impose? And which would you relax or remove? Which replace? And with what others? Creating a utopia is a fascinating thought experiment that would never have become possible for authors such as Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, let alone Thomas Jefferson, 1743 to 1826, to explore were it not for the original ideas of Thomas More, 1478 to 1535. Being inspired into activity, possibly, it is very likely, by the R.C. Manifestos, Francis Bacon was seen as the founder of modern empiricism, and this was juxtaposed in the popular mindset at that time by the rationalism of French philosopher René Descartes, 1596-1650. to In 1637 A.D., René Descartes published Discours de la Méthode, the Discourse on the Method in French, and in 1641, Meditations on First Philosophy. As a young man traveling across Europe, Descartes had been caught up into the cause of the HRE and had fought at the Battle of the White Mountain against Protestant Bohemian rebels. Following this, he had secluded himself away in Germany and proceeded to produce his magnum opuses, The Discourse on Method, and Meditations on First Philosophy. However, when he returned to France and published his works, he met a very surprised audience of his old friends, who explained to him that there were rumors circulating about Descartes, saying he had joined the Rosicrucians. Descartes denied it on the grounds of empirical evidence, ironically, by pointing out that if he belonged to that true and invisible order, how could anyone see him? Descartes' own philosophy laid the foundation for 17th century continental rationalism, later advocated by Baruch Spinoza, 1632-1677, and Godfrey Leibniz, 1646-1716, and opposed by the empiricist school of thought, consisting of Thomas Hobbes, 1588-1679, John Locke, 1632-1704, George Berkeley, 1685 to 1753, and David Hume, 1711 to 1776. Empiricism states that knowledge comes only or primarily from sensory experience, but rationalism is defined as a methodology or a theory in which the criterion of the truth is not sensory but intellectual and deductive. In short, Cartesian doubt was little more than dressed-up solipsism, while Baconian method was little more than pirate's materialism. By this point, both extremes were far from the course charted for them by the papacy. Perhaps a point that is sometimes missed also is that both rationalism and empiricism sought to attain truth, albeit by using only either first inductive or first deductive reasoning, respectively. Had they been able to cooperate rather than compete, perhaps more truths would be known by now. The identity of the author of the R.C. Manifestos, including, as well, the third manifesto, The Chemical Wedding, assuming its authorship was initially also anonymous, remains open to debate even as I write this, some 400 years afterwards. So, is it possible that the R.C. Manifestos were written by John D. just prior to his death in 1609 A.D.? Could the characters of Abraham of Worms and 
Frater CRC, have been a fictional romanticization of Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, 1486 to 1535, and Paracelsus, 1493 to 1541, respectively, by the respective authors of the Magic of Abramelin, 1608, and the R.C. Manifestos in 1614, or were Abraham of Worms and Frater CRC actually themselves both only students of Nicholas Flamel, 1330 to 1418, as had been both Agrippa and Paracelsus, the students of Abbot Trithemius, 1462 to 1516? Was the chemical wedding third R.C. manifesto really written as a ludibrium on utopiae by Johann Valentina Andrea, 1586 to 1654? And did this work's real author intend to correspond the date of the events described in it to the exact date of the signing of the first Freemason constitutions in 1459? Was the R.C. order, as described in the manifestos, real? Might the cipher manuscripts of the 20th century Golden Dawn order, discovered to have been written in a code developed by Trithemius, be evidence that Frater CRC, possibly with Abraham of Worms and Nicholas Flamel, founded the R.C. order in 1407, just as described in the manifestos, and that Trithemius, Agrippa, and Paracelsus, ostensibly as well as Michel Nostradamus, John D., and Judah Lowe, had all been actual members of this real secret society, whose formation undeniably later had such a strong influence on Freemasonry. Is Rosicrucianism merely a philosophical sister system to that of Freemasonry, or were the Golden Dawn rituals originally intended to be the inner order behind the Blue Lodge initiation rituals of Freemasonry? All of these are valid questions, with definite, although as of yet unknown, answers. Besides the 1516 AD Utopia by Thomas Moore, 1478-1535, there was another novel, written prior to the 1619 work Christianopolis by Johann Valentin André, 1586-1654, that can be said to fall into the same literary genre, and this may lend credence to André's claim to have written The Chemical Wedding in around 1605 as a ludibrium parodying the premise of the R.C. Manifestos. In 1602, the work La Cité del Sol, Italian for the City of the Sun, was written, later published in Latin in Frankfurt in 1623 and Paris in 1638, by Tommaso Campanella, 1568-1639, an Italian Dominican friar and philosopher. This work, subtitled a poetical dialogue between the Grand Master of the Knights Hospitallers and a Genoese sea captain, his guest, describes a theocratic monarchy where goods, women, and children are held in common that also resembles the city of Adacentin in the Picatrix, translated into Spanish in 1257, an Arabic grimoire of astrological magic, if André wrote Christianopolis in 1619 as a ludibrium of the 1602 work City of the Sun by Campanella, then it would seemingly substantiate his claim of having written The Chemical Wedding likewise as a similar joke on the R.C. Manifestos. Whether the R.C. order, as described in the R.C. Manifestos, was real or not, by 1647 A.D., the idea of such an invisible college was being advocated and possibly even assembled by Robert William Boyle, 1627 to 1691. Based on this premise, the Royal Society of London for Improving Natural Knowledge, commonly called now simply the Royal Society, was founded in 1660 
by a charter from King Charles II, 1630 to 1685. Thus, whether the original intent of the R.C. Order was to form an international secret society, or simply to forward the Protestant Reformation toward the direction of physical science, by the second half of the 17th century, just such a council of learned elders had assembled as a school in England, tasked with just that purpose. The connection of inspiration between the R.C. Order and the Royal Society is a matter of much historical accounting and considered relatively indisputable. However, the difference between an order based on or inspired by another earlier order and an order that is authorized and chartered as a copy or extension of any original order may be very different in both intentions and actions, words and deeds. In this sense also, confer the Golden Dawn, inspired by the R.C. Order, even if not authorized as an exact copy 